At this time, it's now 8.0 honors and achievements. I'm going to ask Dr. Little to step down, and I think this is what most of you are here for. Oh, I've got it. It's on the next page. Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's not on okay. here. Okay, we have a special, this we're going to do it a little bit different tonight, and I'm going to wing it right here um, as Mary Beth brings over this part of the script. We are going to be celebrating our students with, um, who focus on international languages. That's okay. And so um, tonight, we, uh, when you came in, you signed in, you picked up a packet of the Haribo Gold Bears invented by Haribo. Did everybody get one? Okay, good. Normally we don't feed you, but we fed you tonight. Um, to be exact, Hans Riegel, a candy maker from the German city of Bonn, invented the product in the 1920s and created the name Haribo by combining letters from his name with the name of his home city. Special greeters met you at the door or inside the auditorium. These special greeters are all of, are some of our German students, our students who focus on the German language. We have Gilbert Middle, Middle School 7th grader Bryson Cook. We have Pillion High 11th grader Braxton Brazel. We have Pleasant Hill Middle 8th grader Erin Marie Coyle. And River Bluff High 11th grader Mariah V. Uh, Sikirzyskia, did I get my clothes? Is she is she here? Can can you say your name for me so I'll, I at least one time it will be pronounced correctly by someone other than me? I see that's what I said. Wasn't that? <laughs> and she, she did it so beautifully too. Thank you. And I, I really I'm gonna apologize. That was a hard one. And now we want to welcome Deerfield Elementary fourth grader Theodore Richardelli, who has he is going to greet us. So take it away, Theodore. Thank you. Guten Abend. Okay, hold the microphone up because they're going to ta tape you. Okay. Guten Abend. Ich heiße Theodore Richardelli. Ich möchte Sie zu December Versammlung das Vorstandes begrüßen und Ihnen ein wenig über die Sprachen erzählen, die im Rahmen des Immersions und andere Fremdsprachenprogrammen angeboten werden. Ich bin ein Teil des Immersionsprogramms mein Dear Fellow wo ich Deutsch lerne. Ich spreche schon fleißig Englisch und Portugiesisch. Der äh, Schulbesuch hat 21.341 Schüler, die derzeit eine oder mehrere Fremdsprachen lernen. Es gibt viele Gründe, eine andere Sprache zu lernen. Hier sind nur einige. Erstens, eine zweite Sprache verbessert deine Kompetenzen und deine Noten in Mathe und in Englisch, auch in, auch in SAT und GRE. Zweitens, unsere analytischen Kompetenzen, unsere Kreativität und unsere Erinnerung verbessert sich auch, wenn wir eine Fremdsprache lernen. Drittens, das Lernen von Fremdsprachen verbessert unsere Chancen, in den Bereichen der Regierung, Wirtschaft, Medizin, Rechtswissenschaft, Technologie, Militär, Industrie, Marketing und so weiter. Danke, dass Sie heute Abend gekommen sind. Wir heißen Sie willkommen. Thank you. Okay. I, I mean, that was incredible, Theodore. I think. I know all those companies in the upstate that are German, they'll, they're going to be looking at him to hire him soon. So congratulations. That was wonderful. So we have a little thing that we say where we recognize all the students and the employees. Since we're kind of getting off script tonight, I'm, you know what? I'm going to get way off script, and I'm going to skip that part. And we're going to go straight to you guys. How about that? So to honorees, when you hear your award or name, come on up and stand with Dr. Little here in the front while we brag about you. And we're going to start tonight with some of our impressive golf accomplishments. Lexington High School junior Carly Vardis, who is ranked second as a South Carolina junior female golfer, recently committed to play golf and further her education at Georgia Southern University as a junior.
Since Vardis joined the Lexington Wildcat Girls varsity golf team in the seventh grade, she made the all-region team five times and the all-state team four times. And the team took three team state championships. This year, she won the 2019 South Carolina Class 5A Girls Individual Gold State Championship by shooting three under par. After a playoff round with a Blythewood golfer, she birdied on the second playoff hole to clinch the title. During the 2019 high school fall golf season, Vardis had five wins and five second place finishes in 11 tournaments with a cumulative score of 10 under par for the entire season. Let's give her a round of applause. Ms. Smith. There were some um, very athletic men in the back there. Um, I think <laughs> wondering if they need to take golf lessons. I think so. Her. I think so. <laughs> okay, now we're going to swing over to tennis. Winning its second class 5A state championship as a tennis team in three years, the River Bluff High Girls tennis team became the, the school's first time state champion team best in the state the team coached by brian j Lim, consists of meadow glen middle eighth grader patricia silva salvador and river bluff high school seniors jacobia a abraham shelby byers claire floyd jesse hollins riley mitchell kiana thatcher sophomore leanne zu and freshman jordan schauberg Senior Kiana Thatcher and sophomore Leanne Zhu rallied from first set losses to win their matches just as senior Claire Floyd completed her victory. Senior Jesse Hollins then led the team to a comeback win over J.L. Mann High School. Jesse also made school history by winning her semifinal and final tennis matches. This is the school's first individual girls tennis title, the 2019 Class 4A, 5A girls individual tennis, let's say it again, state championship. <laughs> She completed the season undefeated 27-0 and signed with Coastal Carolina to play next year. Hollins was also named All-American Player of the Year. As if that wasn't enough, Claire Floyd and Jesse Hollins capped off the year by being named to the 2019 All-State. And Coach Brian Lim became the 2019 Region Tennis Coach of the Year. Congratulations, <laughs> ladies. Okay, tonight's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's going to come on up and we're going to hand her a microphone. Okay, let's celebrate our German program's accomplishments now. First, you should know that here in Lexington School District 1, 89% of elementary students are taking a world language elective. 89.5% of middle school students are taking a world language and 49.7% of high school students are taking a world language class this school year. River Bluff High Junior, are you gonna help me? <laughs> Maria Sikirzitska, oh, so beautiful, became a top 14 German Olympiad finalist in the Goethe Institute International Deutsche Olympiad. 270 students from 86 schools and 29 states completed, competed. As a result of placing in that prestigious top 14, she was flown to Chicago to compete in another two-day four-part German assessment. At that level of competition, in the German Olympiad National uh, Competition, Maria, is it Maria? Yeah. Maria took third place. What an accomplishment. So way to go. <laughs> we have more German accomplish accomplishments. Lexington County School District 1's German program received German Center of, of Excellence designation, a national designation presented by the American Association of Teachers of German. The award application process led by Sarah Bucklew and Miriam Grandjohn, is that correct? 
Okay, good. Included a website built by the district's German teachers and much time and hard work. The award letter stated that this was clear evidence that the program had strong support from administration, professional colleagues, parents, students, and the community. The district has 11 schools offering German courses from the novice low to intermediate high levels with 17 German teachers and 1,342 students currently enrolled in German classes just this year. Teachers take a variety of tests ranging from the Praxis ETS to an oral proficiency interview to qualify to teach German in South Carolina. In fact, the district boasts 12 active AATG members, including the current South Carolina Chapter Vice President and the current AATG Secretary. All the district's German teachers spent time abroad to hone their language skills, and many still travel to German-speaking countries to stay in tune. Thanks to World Language Coordinator Lauren Liza E. Spies, PH, Dr. Lauren Liza E. Spies, World Language Lead Teacher Amanda Haji, and the district's German teachers who work so hard on this. Beechwood Middle School's Rebecca Cornish Schnetzer. This, I'm going to tell you all right now, and I'm going to apologize. This is the hardest pronunciation of names I think I've ever had the whole time I've ever done this. So if I butcher your name, please accept my apologies. Carolina Springs Middle School's Nicole Matthews, Deerfield Elementary School's Callison Coggins, J. Werner Castle Sandra Shillington Lopez, and Medine Yigit, Gilbert High School's Anita Lambert, Gilbert Middle School's Arena Kal Kalink Kalinkana, am I close? Am I close? Lexington High School's Christopher Godwin and John Clay Hendricks, Lexington Middle School's Cassara Boiter, Pillion High School's Victoria Conley, Pleasant Hill Middle School's Miriam Grandjohn, River Bluff High School's Sarah Bucklew, and White Knoll High School's Caroline Oates. Sarah, okay. Okay. Well, and now we want to call Sarah Bucklew back up. Can she come back up for just a minute? River Bluff High School Sarah Bucklew is only one of 12 German teachers selected and professionally trained for the role of German coach. In this role, highly experienced educators of German, carefully selected and trained by the Goethe Institute, support German teachers across the United States, States and teach best practices. German teachers are provided a coach for individual or group training with a focus on lesson planning and classroom practices. The German full immersion coaching complies with common core standards and takes place over several weeks, including online preparation, classroom observations, and targeted feedback. Sarah Bucklew also serves as the current South Carolina AATG Vice President and has received the Goethe Teacher Certificate of Merit. We just want to celebrate all these teachers and celebrate Sarah. Okay, we're going to completely switch now. We're going to Kentucky. So Lexington High School senior Caroline Kelly recently competed in the Kentucky National Horse Show with her lease horse, Hopscotch. On Friday, she won the over fences portion of her division and took fourth place on the flat individual portion. <coughs> Excuse me. On Saturday, she took third place in over fences. The Lexington 4 H Horse Club's cumulative points earned the team the title of champion of the 16 to 17 year old equitation division. This was Caroline's first AA rated horse show and national horse show. Is she here? <coughs> okay, let me get a sip of water. Mm. Okay, now we're going to football. Coached by Matthew Hornsby, captains and eighth graders Jaden Bradford, Montreal Bird, Ryan McFarlane, Tayden Mines, and Cam Sutton represent the Pleasant Hill Middle School Cougars football team tonight. Are they here? Come on up. Wow, and they look so handsome. The 
This year, for the first time, Lexington School District 1 partnered with other districts to create the Lexington 10 Middle School Football Competition. The Middle School Football Championship game came down to two Lexington District 1 teams, Pleasant Hill Middle and Gilbert Middle. The Pleasant Hill Middle Cougars won the game 26-0, and the trophy after Jordan Bradford scored four touchdowns. So, oh, excuse me, Jaden Bradford. Jaden, raise your hand so we'll know which one you are. Is he here? Raise your hand. Okay, right here. <laughs> <coughs> the Cougars gave up only six points all season and finished undefeated 8-0. We couldn't fit the entire team in here tonight. However, we want to recognize the entire team. They are eighth graders for Shad Bennett, Dylan Bolin, Chase Bond, Jaden Bradford, Micah Bridges, Daniel Bryan, Montel Bird, Duke Cleary, Jack Cooper, Jonathan Coyne, Charles DeMarco, Domin Dominic Ferrici, Jordan, did I mispronounce that? Okay, Ferracci, Jordan Fryer, Garrett Gallagher, is that right? Gallagher? Okay. Jacob Gepfert, Jalen Green, Shane Hanna, Grayson Hudgens, Cam Lott, Ryan McFarland, Taden Mines, Gracie Moulton, Seth Reynolds, Evan Rothery, Nicholas Rowe, Christian Sexton, Cameron Scott, Cameron Spencer, Keegan Spencer, Cameron Sutton, and Weldon Williamson. And the seventh graders included Brenton Baker, Kristen Becerra, Jackson Broyles, Jacob Bird, Stephen Crawford, DeAndre Dennis, Deacon DeMarco, Maddox Free, Abram Golder, Griffin Harris, Shane Heller, Sam Hiller, MJ Hornsby, Tori Jones, Artem Kalinkin, Hayden Lawler, John Markham, Madison Moore, Antoine Morris, Jerron Sanders, Lionel Siago, David Taylor, and Bradley Vest. And if I've really butchered somebody's name, I truly apologize. But let's celebrate these young men. And I, and I want to stop for just a minute, and I want to thank Coach Bennett, and I want to thank Dr. Little. This was kind of a vision of theirs, and this is the first year we've ever done this. And for those of you who work with middle schoolers, keeping them involved and busy is a very positive thing, and I have heard nothing but positive things about this program. So let's thank them for having this vision. <laughs> Okay, South Carolina recently recognized the winners of its 4-H Golden Egg Contest, which assesses 4-H members' ability to raise chickens that produce high-quality eggs. Gilbert Elementary School fourth grader Mary Ray Oxner won first place in the junior division. The competition is open to South Carolina 4-H members who participated in a 4-H poultry project this past year and have a flock of chickens currently laying eggs. Participants submitted one dozen eggs. Using the same testing measures applied in commercial poultry production, judges considered uniform appearance and consistent interior quality. Based on their exterior, interior, weight, uniform size, and shell thickness, Oxner's chicken eggs graded out as a double A based on USDA standards. Her flock, raised by Oxner since they were less than a week old, now lay their prize winning eggs daily. So I, let's give her a round of applause. I'm interested in fresh eggs, by the way. <laughs> and, and I think those are golden comets. What, what chickens are they? Golden Comets, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. With the Meadow Glen Middle School cheerleading squad captains and eighth graders Addison Kennedy, is it Michaela? Michaela Clampett, Corley Collins, Riley Dean, and Caitlin Hainsworth, and their coach Kiki Woolley and her assistants Amber Chavis and Savannah Pettit, please come forward. And here they are. These team members are representing the squad tonight. The Meadow Glen Middle School Cheerleading Squad competed in six competitions this season. They took home four first place finishes, one second place finish, and one third place finish. 
Best of all, they finished the season strong as they won the 5A Middle School Championship, the first time in school history that cheerleading earned the state title. This competition took place at the Debbie Rogers Cheer Classics held at Colonial Life Arena. The team of 17 8th graders and 10 7th graders consist of Keelan Barnes, Gabby Bragg, Ella Sambruzzi, Lily Bryant, Addie Kennedy, Michaela Clampett, Corley Collins, Caroline Cresswell, Jazz, is it Jasmine or Jasmine? Jasmine? Jasmine Clark, Haley David, Riley Dean, Grace Hare, Caitlin Hainsworth, Ava Huffstetler, Alexandria Mack, Bella Grace McWaddy, Emily Nichols, Kirsten Peoples, Kirsten Ann Priorishi, Peyton Ritchie, Ella Robertson, Brooklyn Sloan, Kendra Tanner, Leela Trapp, Sydney Williams, Madison Zunuga, Zunaga, and Zoe Woody. So let's give these ladies a round of applause. We're going to go to the fair now. Students showed off their range of talents and artistic skills during the annual South Carolina State Fair by winning many first place awards. Three Lexington Middle School students, sixth grader Rosalie Jaramillo, seventh grader Haley Thomas, and sixth grader Taryn Thomas took home eight first place awards and one best in class award. Rosalie won Novice Western Horsemanship and Novice Western Champion awards. Haley won equitation over fences 18 inches, Western Horsemanship 12 and under, Western Pleasure 12 and under, and 12 and under Western Champion Awards. Taryn scored first place awards in food, candy, and food pie. And she took the good pie best in class. Well, I don't know what kind of pie that was. Lexington High School freshman Ethan Willie won the 13 to 15 Western Reserve Champion Award. Five Pleasant Hill Elementary School students received first place recognition for their art and photography. Fifth grader Ella Copeland in 3D art. First grader Isabella Mazzini in 2D art. First grader Logan Sayers in photography. And fifth grader Charlotte Spencer in 2D art. Fifth grader Annika Sch Schweiger took home the Best of Show Award in 2D art. Pleasant Hill Middle School sixth grade students also took home first place art and photography awards. Elizabeth Cole took first place in photography while Tate Welch took first place in 3D art. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, now we're going to leave the students and we're going to head over with our teachers. Since Pleasant Hill Elementary students won the most ribbons for art entries in the South Carolina State Fair, they earned special recognition for their art teachers, Anya Degtiareva, Reva, am I close? Degtiareva, and Patricia Green. Uh, Anya and Green received the South Carolina State Fair Elementary Art Teachers Award for shaping and supporting their students' artistic talents. Fifteen Pleasant Hill Elementary students won first, second, or third place ribbons and multiple merit awards in the 2D and 3D student art competition. Green and Anya led their students with a combined 39 years of experience. Are they here? No? Okay, let's give them a round. Oh, wait a minute. Here she is. The 2019 Lexington Emergency Education Assistance Plan, better known as LEAP, a Lexington School District 1 Educational Foundation annual campaign funded solely through employee don donations, runs during the first few weeks of the school year. 
Thanks to the generosity of our Lexington District 1 family members, the results enable the foundation to assist the district and its families in a number of important ways. The emergency fund helps families experiencing a crisis who need temporary help to survive, while the education fund help the helps the district with important educational programs and initiatives. Foundation Executive Director Julie Anderson Washburn will come forward. There she is. And she is going to hand out the awards as we recognize these groups. During the LEAP campaign, 2,584 employees donated $164,671.88. Let's give them a round of applause. Elementary schools recognized for having the highest giving increase over last year include Pillion Elementary School, represented by Principal Debbie Poole, and LEAP representatives Susan Harmon and Ruth Spence. Are they here? There's Miss Debbie. Red Bank Elementary School represented by Principal Janet Reichert and LEAP representatives Brittany McGargle and Liddy Carpenter Parish. Are they here? Here comes Miss Janet. <laughs> oh, I like the back. Saxagatha Elementary School represented by Bre Principal Beth Hauk and LEAP representatives Andrea Slice and Deanna Thacker. Are they here? There's Miss there's Miss Hauk. <laughs> Madam Chair, if I could make a point of privilege here. Yeah. I was a LEAP representative with the district for many years, and I just want to thank these folks for doing such an outstanding job to a program that really tugs at my heartstrings. Thank you all so much. In the highest giving increase for middle schools, Gilbert Middle School, represented by Principal Benji Reichard um, and LEAP representatives Courtney Harrell and Molly Sutcliffe, increased their giving more than any other middle school. And in the highest giving increase for high schools, Lexington Technology Center, represented by Principal Bryce Myers and LEAP representatives Sarah Gillespie and Robert Ziegler, increased their giving more than any other high school. Food service and nutrition showed the highest giving increase in support offices outside of schools. They are represented by Director Sally Nicholson and LEAP representative Polly Payinghouse and Ashley Summers. We're going to stop for a photograph right there. Bryce, you, you need a frog or a, you just got a banner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's, let's give them a round of applause while they're getting their picture made. And last but not least, the final award, which is probably, I think, says the most because it just shows what a commitment this school had to this program, um, is the 100% participation award. That means that all the employees in this school gave to these programs. It goes to Lake Murray Elementary School, represented by Principal Jennifer Stanley, and LEAP representatives Kimberly Nunnery and Christina Reed. Are they here? Right. Yeah, let's give them a <laughs> mm 
Yes. We're actually going to ask Dr. Little to come forward, not to himself. If you would come forward to accept this award for the district, readers of the state newspaper voted Lexington School District 1 the best public school district for the fifth year running. This, the district received this award in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. The state's annual Best of Contest allows residents to vote on their favorite restaurants, services, schools, and more. The newspaper then announces the winners in a special supplement in the paper. One of the fastest growing school districts in the state, ranking sixth in total enrollment, we are proud of our excellent academic reputation, our students' academics, arts and athletic accomplishments, and the accomplishments of our teachers and professional staff. Lexington District 1 now serves 27,500 students from pre-kindergarten to grade 12 with nearly 4,000 employees. And that doesn't even include our substitutes. We have 31 schools, 17 elementary schools, 8 middle schools, 5 high schools, and 1 technology center. Yes, we are, we are very proud of Lexington One, and thank you to everyone who made that happen. <laughs> Working in support of education, also known as WISE, named Lexington Technology Center business teacher Randy Scott as the recipient of the Gold Star Teacher Award. Come on up, Mr. Scott. This is his eighth consecutive year to be considered for the Gold Star Teacher Award. A teacher must achieve a 93% pass rate in at least one of his or her classes on either the fall or spring wise financial literacy certification test. Scott challenges his students to become financially capable by emphasizing and providing instruction on relevant personal finance topics. Way to go, Mr. Wise. I mean, not Mr. Wise, Mr. Scott, but he is wise. Oh. In a minute, I'm going to turn it over to Theodore. He's, he would do, do a much better job than me, I know. Pillion Pil Elementary School resource, resource Officer Odell Glenn plays a vital role in the education process. In fact, WIS-TV and Mungo Homes agree with that. They recently honored him with the WIS-TV Mungo Homes Community Builder Award. A member of the Pillion Police Department, Glenn talks to students about the dangers of drugs and the importance of making good and healthy choices. He establishes personal relationships with students, and he knows what it takes to keep our elementary students engaged. For instance, during the school's homecoming week, he dressed up for the various theme days and played music complete with speakers and lights during morning drop-off car duty. And I think there's an example right there. He said he will use his $1,000 prize money to go to an organization called Soul Stepping. Stole, soul Stepping by Shoes and Socks for Needy Children in Pillion. Let's give him a round of applause. Is he here? Is, is Officer Glenn here? He's not here tonight. The online giving platform DonorsChoose.org continues to support our educators' funding requests. Since July 1, the district received 929 items with a monetary value of $21,203.36 from donors, donors Choose. Our most recent educators with fully funded projects include White Knoll Middle School teachers Leanne Cogdell and Joanne Conger. Sixth grade social studies teacher Leanne Cogdell received a grant of $330 to purchase 25 copies of Everything You Need to Ace World History, which supports the new sixth grade social studies standards for her classroom. Sixth grade mathematics teacher Joan Conger received a $514 Donors Choose grant for a wobble stool and charging station for her, her classroom. These will all help their students learn. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Our
On December 2nd, the South Carolina Edu Education Oversight Committee announced that Lexington County School District 1 received one of six grants designed to focus on improving children's readiness for kindergarten by enhancing the quality of pre-kindergarten programs for four-year-olds. Academic assistants, early childhood, and Title I coordinator Jessica Buzzard and her team, parent engagement specialist Melissa Martin and preschool coordinator Diana Smith wrote the $74,222 grant, which they will implement, implement at Pelion Elementary School with Principal Debbie Poole. The grant funds will increase opportunities for play and language and literacy development. It will also expand targeted professional learning for 4K teachers and staff. We can't thank them enough. Let me reiterate that. That's a $74,000 grant. And these ladies did that on their own time. Thank y'all. Way to go. One thing I will tell you from, from the community, um, prior to, 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 of course, being in this position, when we would have a child age out of BabyNet, which is a, a state-run um, uh, program for, for kids with um, uh, just different occupational, physical, uh, and speech therapy needs, um, they age out at three. Um, and um, sometimes insurance can be a little spotty when it comes to um, uh, getting these kids the services they, they, they need. And so we have made it a very common practice to refer the parents to uh, Lexington School District 1 to the early education mm -hmm. program. And uh, the, the feedback we get from the parents is always uh, astounding. So I um, would certainly uh, uh, appreciate that for, from you guys and, and encourage any you know, of the, uh, the local community to, um, to certainly make sure they utilize that resource. Um, so I may have made y'all's job a little harder. I apologize, but, uh, but, uh, I think y'all, I think y'all, that's the business you're in. So, um, so excellent job. Great. Red Bank Elementary School continues to seek funding support for its Special Olympics project successfully. PE teacher Patty Corley received a $450 grant from the Unified Champion Schools program. This grant guarantees that the program continues to flourish and provide opportunities that lead to the creation of socially inclusive schools that support and engage all learners. Let's give Ms. Corley a round of applause. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. We are so proud of everyone. We love sharing our good news. When you step out, if you'll walk to the left, you'll find your certificates on a table out there and someone from communications will help you. We want to wish you all a wonderful holiday and hopefully every, Santa will find all of you in the next week or so. Thank you. That was, I think that's the hardest one I've ever had.